Hello, folks. It's This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. And this is This Week in History, where Will looks up an event from history and then explains it to me within or under an hour. Uh, around an hour. <laughs> Ish. We're timing him. <laughs> uh, this week, uh, we are discussing the death. Uh, it's a French fella? French fella, yep. Uh, the death of Olivier de Clisson. Clisson. Oui. Um, the general rule I've learned for uh, saying French words is uh, look at all the consonants and kind of ignore them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, make them, and then the, if it's an N, it's always a huh, huh, huh. Uh, all actually right. actually pretty close to accurate. So, uh, and uh, we'll be discussing next week in a little bit. Yeah. After you watch the rest of the show. Yeah. So right now, wait till the end. Will, are you ready? I am ready, To sir. discuss the death of Olivia de Glisson. Glisson. Ouais. We have one hour. Ouais. <laughs> all right. So, Olivia de Glisson is, is technically from uh, what is called Brittany, oh. but that is a region of modern-day France. Oh. But at the time, it was slightly different. Mm. Uh, it's on the very western chunk of France. Uh, we'll post it right there, okay. starting out with pictures, uh, just so people kind of know whereabouts the majority of our tale takes place. Right. Now, Olivier was born in 1300. Uh, his family had lands in Brittany, Clisson. That's where he's from, oh, De okay. Clisson. De Clisson. Uh, De Clisson. And uh, chunks of land in Normandy, which was proper France at the time. Okay. Uh, and it fell under the purview of the king of France. So he, Normandy's, uh, that's where D-Day takes place, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. I always, think that, I always think that's in England. Well, it's because it started in England and then it ended up in and France. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's called Normandy because it's the land of the Northmen. Okay. And that's where the Vikings were given land ah. by the Franks because they're ah. like, uh, you, you guys suck and we can't beat you in battle. You We've discussed here? this in previous yeah. episodes. Check out yeah. other things about yeah. the Norwegians. Yeah. And then they're like, <laughs> can you move here and then fight any Vikings who show up? And they're like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. We like farmland. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> You're going to make us dukes? Cool. <laughs> We'll stay here. They did. They made him a different mm-hmm. guy named Rolo. So he's made Just of not sure uh, they chocolate that way. and caramel. All right. Ready? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Olivier is born and raised uh, mm-hmm. the son of a very wealthy family, uh, which meant at the time he was required to do soldier stuff. Oh. So this is the height of the Middle Ages. This is the, the towards the end of it. So this is the, the time of knights in armor, uh, it's like plate armor is when it's it's coming into play. There's yeah. no guns yet. Okay. Um, so this is uh, if you were to go to a Renaissance fair. Yeah, you'd this see this. Is what they're talking about. This is what they're talking about. Yeah, right. The jousts and all that. That's very popular. Is this is when we're really starting to see what uh, the modern take on like a knight is. Okay. Um, chivalry is a very popular concept, especially in France where it was created. Chivalry. Uh, that was the rule. Yep. Um, so you're expected as a, as a nobleman, uh, typically you start your training at age seven. So your first seven years you get to be a kid, uh, but also get educated and be encouraged to enjoy these things. Uh, and especially if you're the eldest, because you are required to take over dad's job. Uh. And dad's job was to go punch other guys in the face, whose job it was to punch other guys in the face. That's the job of the long line of, of punching people. Long line of punching people. That's who you come from, kid. It really does. I mean, that's the, it boils you see down. These fists. To, just, you know, and they start adding armor to it, so it gets it's a rougher mm. fist to get punched by. Uh, but no, these guys would just you know ride around and act gentlemanly, and then hit each other with swords until they died, no. um, or lances, or axes, or maces, or whatever they felt like using. Table legs. Table legs. <laughs> Ham hocks. Pool cues. Pool cues. Bud light cans. A rock. <laughs> a headbutt. You know, whatever. Whatever yeah. is close at hand. <laughs> For sure. You learn to kill somebody with that. So these guys are, are it's a very martial society. Uh, the men are expected to all be, you know, big strapping man, go smash, kill thing. Mm. Okay. But they're also encouraged to do other things. Like they're supposed to read and write. Um, at least one language. Chivalry. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, the rules of chivalry were actually started mm-hmm. to curb these homicidal maniacs from just murdering everybody. I mean, you're raised from a child to adulthood being trained how to kill people. Your daily job is put on armor, walk around in armor, run in armor, jump over things in armor, mm-hmm. hit things with a sword, hit things with an axe, mm-hmm. shoot things with a bow, ride a horse, kill as many animals as you can through hunting, hawking, or other methods, fishing yeah. not... Fishing's frowned on. Oh. That's boring. Yeah. You have to actively go hunt stuff. They'd hunt boar with spears, so a wild boar, which... Oh. I'm sorry, I'm not much of a hunter, but if I did not have a tank, I don't really want to hunt a boar. Oh, okay. like, they're vicious. I mean, that's... that You've got to stab it, and then it probably is just going to get mad at you. 
so there were constant accidents where guys accidents. The bigger boars, boars are big, right? Hey, they can get big. I mean, think about a pig, mm-hmm. like a domestic pig. Now make it furious. Pig, pigs are bigger than I think they are too. Yeah, everybody thinks it's you know, babe, the pig. Piglet. No, yeah. no, no, no. Some of these things are three hundred pound monsters. Yeah, was yeah. Uh, this and these aren't like the little javelinas you see like like in South South America or uh, Southeast uh, or Southwest United States where they're kind of rough and tumble little things and they're not like the boars of the Serengeti where they're just meat and bone these are big wild pigs of Europe they can be really huge and mean there's a reason why they were hunted is because they provided a ton of food oh sure uh, and then they got domesticated so anyway his hey. childhood was built around hunting these types of things uh, training getting strong, getting fit. Uh, At a young age, he would be expected to become a page, which is a guy who, uh, you know, he walks around and he holds uh, the food like we have today. Ooh, I kicked the table. Uh, Today we have bread again from Lock, Stock, and Bagel. Mm, Looks like fried chicken. It looks like fried chicken, (laughs) but it is blueberry lemon with streusel on it. Mm. So go to Lock, Stock, tell them them you saw this uh, podcast, video cast thing. They're on Webster. It's amazing. Yep. Tell me you saw the podcast, and they'll probably go, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I <laughs> What's your order, sir? The, I talked to the, the, I think she's the owner. Her name is Margie. She's there every day, so I assume she's in a position of authority. Hi, Margie. For all I know, she's just a customer who likes hanging out back behind the counter. Uh, but I mentioned this, and she's like, that's really cool. I was like, I keep mentioning it. Hopefully, our two followers will come in and, want, and get uh, coffee, although I think they go there anyway. Anyway, moving, moving on. on. So uh, you start at seven. You you you're the guy who holds the food, you know, in the old paintings and stuff. There's oh, like, yeah. like that guy with the really stupid haircut, like the He-Man haircut. Yeah, That's yeah. the page boy. Yeah, and he's holding like a a pitcher of wine, and he's got the rag, you know, and he's, that's his job. Is that uh, a helmet cut? You suppose? I, originally, yeah, that was the idea. It was it was cut yeah. there so your hair wouldn't get in your face when you're wearing yeah. a helmet. And so everything else. Well, I think they, it was just an expedience. Like, this thing's stupid. Get out of the I think way. They did it like a bowl cut instead of a bowl on their head, yep. but a helmet on your head. Yep. And then there was, like, the Saxon haircut. Like, it depended on where you were in the in the world. Oh, like, okay. the Saxons, they shaved the back of their head mm-hmm. and then kind of brought it slanting forward because you didn't want to have to worry about all of this when you're on campaign. Okay. You're wearing a helmet. Your hair get all tangled up. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, the Vikings, they kept their hair long, typically, and pretty darn clean. Having a comb was a big part of it. It all depended on where you were. And then French, they, they did the page haircut. That was much more common there. It changes place to place. So we can assume he has a stupid haircut. Okay. Um, Olivier, yeah. the Olivier, one with the stupid haircut. Olivier, the one with the stupid haircut. And they're like, <laughs> which one? They're all named mm-hmm. Olivier, and they all have stupid oh. haircuts. Because Olivier is actually the fourth Olivier. So oh. his daddy was an Olivier. And his daddy's daddy was probably an Olivier. Going back until there's like a Robert, probably. <laughs> they have a lot of Roberts. Right. Um, so that's his life, is, is being a, a soldier, right? Um, learning how to also govern the land, uh, which involves usually collecting taxes, um, handling disputes between farmers, because there isn't like a big federal law. He's the law. Um, and uh, because his family is, is basically, um, they're called the seniorial family, which is like they're the top lords in the area. They own the most land. Yeah. So of the region, they're kind of the big dog. Uh, they're expected to sort out disputes between lesser nobles, like knights and other lords. Uh, and he answers to the Duke of Brittany and also the King of France. Because okay. his lands in Brittany, the Duke runs those, okay. so he's supposed to answer to that guy. But because of his lands in Normandy, that's directly owned by the king, so he answers to that guy. Right. So he's got to make sure... Like, if they ever come into conflict, he's kind of in a weird spot. Yeah. Because then he has to figure out who to back. Mm. And this this is important for later. <laughs> Spoilers. This is, this is important for later. Um, now, uh, when he was uh, 20 years old, he got married, which is actually kind of late for yeah. a lot of people, yeah. um, to uh, Blanche de Beauville. Uh, they had a son, Jean. 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 It's Jean, but Jean, because they know how to pronounce it. Um, and he actually worked with a guy named Philippe Valois. Now, the Valois family is, like, one of the most eminent French families of the time. Uh, they're not royalty, but they're real close. And um, Philippe is kind of this warrior dude. He's in charge of maintaining peace. Okay. Uh, and he's particularly focused on a place in, in France called Gascony. It's right on the border of Spain and France. There's lots of fighting there all the time. Uh, that's where, like... We talked about how Charlemagne got ambushed and attacked and all his guys got killed. Yeah. That's where it happened. Like, Gascony is just, it's always trouble. 
It's always trouble. There's always okay. fighting. Is that a border city? It, it's a border region. It's mm-hmm. like a whole swath of land, yeah. and it's just it's rough country. So the Gascons are considered, like, throughout France's history, just, like, tough, rough people who largely hate France. It's kind of funny. Hmm. They don't really like anybody. They're very independent. Okay. Like, oh, no, the Gascons go away. You talk like us. No, we don't. We are taller than you because we're on the mountains. I feel like every country has a little area like that. I think uh, the so. The people who don't like that the country. They don't really like the country, but they're part of it. They're not really able to go, we're not part of you anymore. But... Like Montana. Yeah. <laughs> we're part of America, but don't want to be. Yeah. We want to just be Montana. So And, and the yeah. Welsh. And, um, yeah, all right. And Scotland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> England seems to have the most, but <laughs> England right. just likes to colonize. That's their thing. Um, so anyway, so John gets uh, kind of, uh, not John, uh, Olivier gets close with uh, Philippe, and Philippe eventually becomes king of France. Oh. So because they're tight, um, now this is his friend who's his overlord now. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah. Which is nice. So he, he's... he's now he knows who to follow. He's, he, <laughs> he's been following the right guy his whole life. Very like, right. He's like, okay, cool, I'm glad I, you know, I... I hitch my wagon to that that very noble horse. I'm very glad. Um, and they go on like four or five expeditions together through different parts of France. To he keeps having to go back to Gascony. There's always problems with like the no, the Norman lords. They tend to be rebellious because they're all like Viking descendants, and they just like to punch things in the face. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, that's that's the that's the style of the time. The nobles, if they have an argument, there's no legal system to go. All right. Fix this. That could take years. I got your legal system right here. Exactly. And it can take years. And when your income is largely tied to every harvest yeah. and every, you know, merchant's fair and everything like that, you need to solve problems I'm, now. Yeah. So you need to be able to go and handle your stuff. And a lot of that stuff is handled through a, a gentleman's argument of sword to face. Hmm. And if you can't defend your land... So it all becomes like a system of alliances. And that's how it's been for hundreds of years. Now, at the same time, uh, there is a woman named Jeanne, Jean with another N and an E, so J-E-A-N-N-E, de Belleville. Uh, She's born in 1300 as well. Um, Now, she inherited uh, the lands of Montague and Bellevue because her father died when she was only four and he had no other heirs. This is a rare instance of the woman inherits everything. Oh. Not the nearest male relative, it's the nearest child. Okay. It's primogeniture is what it's called. Eldest child. Gets yeah. my stuff. Um, now her mother That could makes have, sense to me, by the way. Yeah. Her <laughs> mother could have changed that if her mother had remarried mm. and tied all of the lands to somebody else. Or at least her lands. The mother could have done that. But she apparently never remarried. Right. That's a matter of record that we would have been able to find. Um, and so from the age of four, Jen is the owner of all this land. And she's the seniorial leader then of this region. So How old she's, is she? she's four. Oh. <laughs> she's four. Now she didn't just. I'm in charge, everybody. <laughs> Guilty. <Maybe>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's dispensing justice, but like she would have. She would have definitely <laughs> been at her father's, you know, knee, learning how to do stuff. Yep. And then her mother probably would have taken over, and then she would have had um, probably like the chief man at arms, who was like their top fighting guy. He would have been the advisor for that. Uh, they would have had somebody in charge of their treasury or their exchequer or something who is a man at uh, an, an administrator. They would have had a constable who is an expert in the law. Um, She's got people. She's got people. Uh, the steward was probably super important. That's the guy who does all the day-to-day running of the castle, okay. which is a super important job. It's yeah. like the butler in a manor, but with a bunch of knights and soldiers yeah, and yeah. Then all kinds of chaos and with the constant threat of maybe your neighbors want to kill you. <laughs> so it's a pretty important job. They were usually, like, you think, like, the guy who does the books is just this weedy little dude, but he's probably able to hit you really hard with a stool or something and <laughs> probably a fighting person as well. I like to think everybody at this time was really tough because the human turnover rate is really, like, the mortality rates in these times are awful. Yeah. Um, like, you had, like, 15 kids and you'd maybe get to keep five of them because it'd just die. Um, it's because a tough it, life. Well, if you caught the cold, there's no cure for the sure. cold. If you have something that's an infection, there's no penicillin. They, they, they don't know what all these things are. We're learning at this point. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, science starts to catch up with some of this. Yeah, it's also the norm, I guess. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you get used kids. to something and you're like, 
Yeah, well, this child died. I mean, some people genuinely cared whenever their kids died. Even um, oh, I'm sure some people cared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's like, like, but like kings usually. Ah, oh, yes, my child died. And you're supposed to be stoic. But yeah. like um, Charles V of France, this very famous French king, um, who like fought at the front of armies and was always considered like really stoic. But when his wife died, he like openly wept at her funeral. Uh -huh. He had five children die, and he sobbed like a child every time one uh -huh. of them died because he actually cared. But then every other time they saw him, he was just stone-faced and scary. So it's like this guy was capable of great death and nobody said anything. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, but they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dead. What was that? <laughs> and I like to think he was probably the guy like, all right, let's handle this outside. You want to make fun of my kids? You know, make fun of me laughing about my family dying. I'm going to go kill your family. Ooh, and definitely. you can watch. You know. All allegedly. All we don't allegedly. Know. We're all speculating allegedly. here. Yeah, but... <laughs> Be nice when people are grieving. It's just, it's That's nice true. to read about things like that. We're like, oh, yes, it's super high mortality rate, but this still sucked for somebody. Yeah. Like, That's sad face. Um, so, anyway, uh, Jeanne de Belleville is um, kind of in a similar position, but the female side. Okay. So, uh, she is not expected to learn how to go out and fight, <laughs> but she is expected to learn how to rule properly. Uh, women were much more focused on. Uh, ruling of the household, learning like the interfamily politics. Um, she could speak multiple languages. Uh, she spoke French. She spoke English fluently. She probably spoke Latin. Uh, she could read and write. Um, and she was extremely well liked and well respected. Well, um, she's four. Well, as, I mean, not at four. <laughs> <laughs> she comes out. She's just like. Yeah, we hate Whoa. that kid. She just won't stop. Yeah. So my daughter yelled at me. Oh, did she? In Latin. How old is she? Three. Please. Jesus. And then she wrote a very formal letter <laughs> demanding a new toy. It was really well written. I couldn't read it. I had to give it to the steward. You know what it Good said. Good she's in charge. Good. Yep, that's why she's running the show. Um, so because she's young, though, yeah. they need to get her a man fast because the male provides security mm, okay. in a time when you're expected to fight. Well, her mother can't fight. She's in, she's like a dowager. She's older. She's a widow, uh, and she was never trained to fight. Uh, they try to secure her position. They marry her to a fellow named uh, which one is it? Geoffrey de Chateaubriand the Seventh. He's not going to be in the story for long. Okay, I won't write uh, his whole name down. No, <laughs> uh, he marries her when she's twelve and he's nineteen, and he's already a widower at this time with a kid. Wow. <laughs> so. They start, yeah, like, he probably got married when he was, like, 13. So yeah. it's, it's not a huge thing. This, the expectation at the time was when you hit puberty and you could have kids, you were having kids. Because they would all, it was kind of a way, it's a pragmatic way of saying, this, this is fertile ground, these, kid, these people can have kids, ergo they make a good heir. Right. You don't want to have, like, a dud heir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, well, he can't actually have kids, I guess they need a new heir to have more heirs after that. Right. The family line's going to die with the guy who can't have kids or the girl who can't have kids. You might shuffle some things. Okay. Get, it's get to make them get it's a bit cold, but it makes a lot of sense in a yeah. time where you just die sometimes. You catch a chill and you just die. Or, you know, some neighbor just decides to burn your house down and sure. murder you as you run out. It's rough that, times. That's a, that's a really you rough time. You have to do time. what you got to do. So we can't look at it through a modern lens of, oh, my God, she was 12 and he was 19. Sure. I mean, we can. We, I mean, we can. We should not be doing that. Right. We live in a time where this is not we necessary. Don't, we don't die that quick. Yes, we don't die that quick. We have medicine. <laughs> People my age would be... Cons you, you and I would be considered old men. Well, yes. Yes. I mean, you might be on the venerable side. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true. Anyone older than me would be considered better. Carry on. I'm moving. <laughs> uh, now, they were together uh, from 13... 12 to 1326. So they had a good long relationship. Okay. And then he died. <laughs> yeah. Could have seen that coming based Could've on seen all that the other. Comment. Now, during that time, they have two kids, a boy and a girl. Um, Perfect. He did his job. Yep, he did a good. He did, he did a good. Um, they have their two children. Uh, but at, at some time during this, she meets. Olivier de Clisson. But Probably he's around alive. Well, the other guy's alive still? Well, he's alive. Right. Around 1324, maybe. Because okay. she has a daughter hmm. named Isabeau, hmm. who was born in 1325 mm -hmm. and is also the daughter of Olivier de Clisson. 
Mm-hmm. She's married during this time. Mm-hmm. He's married during this time mm-hmm. to different people. Mm-hmm. They uh-huh. don't outright talk about this in the annals. They're like, oh, well, she had this illegitimate child. Okay. And they're like, oh, well, he had this illegitimate child. And they're like, it's the same illegitimate child, which means I like to think of this romantically. These two people meet. They're maybe not in great relationships. Then it's, it's, they're, they're dealing with rough times. Who knows? They fall for each other. They have a tryst. They have this child. Now, uh, when Jeanne's husband dies in 1326, she's got an infant baby and, like, two toddlers. So she's got to get married again to protect those kids. Okay. She marries a guy named Guy. Guy would be the, the French Guy. pronunciation. Guy de Pentevra. Uh, Pentevra. In 1328. And almost immediately, his family protests the union to the local bishops and says, no. We want this annulled. Why? That's not clear. Oh. But my theory is, he found out that she had a tryst with Olivier and this yeah. co- this kid is out of wedlock. The family allegedly it was concerned about um, their lands going to these people. Apparently they had an issue with uh, their legacy being handed down. They did not want their family linked to Jeanne de Clisson and her family and her kids no. because she already has three kids and they didn't want their stuff going to some other family. They want to dilute their wealth. Yes, their... exactly. Oh. Uh, as opposed to the idea that if they link together, then their kids get all this, they make a super family. Right. So there's some drama that goes on to it. He casts her out, basically. It's very, it's, it's, it's a scandal at the time, because she's a big wig, and he's a big he wig. He casts her out? He basically casts her out because his family says, this is done. Yep. The Pope annuls the marriage. Didn't yep. happen. That's what an annulment means. Okay. By Catholic law. Just doesn't count. So she is alone again. So that's her second. Is she still in charge of... She's still in charge of her lands, okay. but she's still kind of on the hunt. Sure. Around the same time, um, Olivier's wife dies. So now the two star crossed... This might work out well for Olivier. The two star crossed lovers are finally both single mm. at the same time. This is the medieval rom-com drama? It's a drama. It's a drama. It's okay. a, well, this, it might be some I'm sure stuff. there were lighter you moments. Could, <laughs> you could make a rom-com, like, oh, we're both single at the same time because our spouses died. Mm. Yay. <laughs> uh, funny enough, in uh, 1330, she and Olivia get hitched. Yay, it's Good official. Job. And he officially recognizes Isabel, his daughter, who's Uh-oh. five. Well, <laughs> so, better late than never. <laughs> they've been, I, who knows, they might have been with each other throughout all of this sure. visiting it's a fascinating love story because yeah. it goes strong 1331 funny enough uh, Guy mysteriously dies oh. it's written as mysteriously in every source I can find he mysteriously died so again romantic will thinking I think Olivier murdered him oh romantic yes you run you run your mouth about Jen you have the, the chance to, to help her to protect her murder or or Jen did it herself. She might have murdered him. Because she was publicly shamed. Yeah. And we're going to find out this is not a woman you mess with. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. So 1330. I'm on her side so far. I really like Jen. So uh, 1330, they get married. Over the next 10 years, they have four more kids. Bang, bang, bang. So Here we go. he's got a son. Yep. Jean. Jean. This is his eldest. Strapping kid. Uh, she's got two kids from a previous marriage and now four more with Olivia. So she's got six. So the grand total is at least seven kids. Uh, I think Olivier might have had others with his first wife. Okay. But apparently they have no claim to anything. They're not so. really super important. The one that matters the most is Jean. Because okay. he, he lives the longest uh, and he inherits. Yes. He, he inherits his father's um, lands in his old homestead. Uh, so he's important. Uh, I mean, all the they're all important to the family. Sure. I'm sure they had a wonderful speaking. time. Um, they had a son, Maurice. He lived to be a year old. Mm. Poor that Maurice. Sucks. Um, we so hardly knew you. We hardly knew you. Uh, then she has Olivier V, oh. who later became known as the Butcher. Oh. 
and was a constable of France. He lived to be like 68 years old. So this guy was, and he was known as a butcher for his battlefield prowess. Oh, not but his not like cured he, meats. Not his cured meats, <laughs> and not because he was like, you know, Sweeney Todding people in back streets. This mm-hmm. guy was apparently a monster on the battlefield. Okay. So that's, that's all. We don't know a huge amount of why he was called the butcher, but it was specifically mentioned that it was his battlefield, not yeah. that he like massacred a village. Okay. Usually, Don't. anyone named with the nickname of the butcher is someone you should just kind of avoid. Yeah, right. Unless like you're I, already friends with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's a, there's somebody you really want to be close with. <laughs> Or, or you really want to? <laughs> you don't want to be anywhere near him, especially if you're on a battlefield. Sure. You want to be on the same side as that guy. You don't want to be on the other side because that guy's going to cut you up. I just picture him now as like Bill the Butcher from Gangs in New York, just uh, getting in there with his stone eye and just murder. It's like it's not good. It's a like bad a day. Big top hat. Yep, big top hat, but armor. You know, full plate armor, top hat, big mustache. Sorry, it works. I dropped a thing. You dropped a thing. You can't do the pencil thing if you don't have the pen. Okay. Got it. Um. So, their family is growing. Yeah. Unfortunately, during this time, 1337 starts the Hundred Years' War. Oh, which no. Which lasted from 1337 to 1453, so it's actually 116 years. But who's counting? But who's counting? It is possibly the longest war in history. Maybe. <laughs> At what point do they call it the Hundred Years' War? After is done, I think. Because okay. <laughs> for, for this and time, and then they rounded down. They rounded <laughs> down. Well, there were armistices. Like there were chunks oh, of time sure. where they weren't fighting, but they were actively fighting for the overwhelming majority of this. And it was France versus England. Now, France and England have been skirmishing and fighting, always, pretty much yeah. since forever. Yeah. I mean, France, but this is all tied to William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror, Conqueror is Norman. He's a Frenchman, essentially. He crosses the English Channel, which was not called that, invaded England, which wasn't really called that, conquered it. During the Hundred Years of War, which yeah, wasn't called yeah, that. No. <laughs> Nothing was what it is yeah. now. But no, yeah, right? It's, it's all through the lens of history. This is what we call it. But they were like, no, we're not going to call it. It's just like, you know, Roman times, they didn't say, well, it's 54 BC. Sure. <laughs> You'll see coins stamped like that. Oh, this, this coin's from 52 BC. What? They couldn't tell the future. They knew they were before something happened. What? You guys are dumb. Um, But so what happened to cause this Hundred Years' War was William the Conqueror takes over England. His family eventually becomes a Plantagenet family. So we've got Henry, we talk about Edward the Longshanks, all these guys. Eventually we get to Edward III. Now, I talked about how Philippe Valois became king. Yes. His predecessor died, and then it became a question of who technically is the closest relative and inherits the land. And technically speaking, Edward had a better claim. Mm. And he's the king of England. Now the French are like, eh, because Edward's like a cousin. Okay. But then this other guy is like a second cousin, but he's French. Hmm. So the French basically say, now this this is a, this is going to cause huge debate because I'm basically saying England was right to say they technically were should be running the kingdom. Okay, but it's a lot muddier than that. It's all about twisting family trees and who's who. But yeah, this yeah. is the argument: is that Edward says, well, technically I should be king, so I want I want France, and the French are like, no, but you're English. We have to have a f- no. Yeah. We're not making this one big kingdom. Not without a fight. Not without a fight. <laughs> and it becomes one oh. immediately. Oh, now, boy. Edward is <laughs> descended of warriors. His dad was incompetent and awful. Um, and then his dad was the hammer of the Scots, Edward the Longshanks. Yeah. So his grandfather is terrifying. Edward III's grandfather is a very well-renowned warrior who also kind of bankrupted England. And Edward III has to deal with all of this legacy. But he's like, ah. Money's good, so yeah, France. Give me France is wealthy. Give me I could France. use money. I could use money, um, and it causes this eventually almost cataclysmic thing. We start to see things that are close to what we consider total war, where they just destroy entire landscapes. Like they, the the structure of the land is changed in wow. some places yeah, because they're they're carving ditches, they're burning farms, they're destroying good farmland just out of spite. Uh. Scorched earth is a thing. Uh, it's it's brutal. Now, tied to all of this... Why can't we have a nice war? Why can't we have a nice war? 
yeah, this is this also starts to draw in like the Holy Roman Empire. Oh. Then chunks of Italy get involved because they're on boards with uh, with well, Italy is very renowned for mercenaries at this time, so they. The, the merchant family starts sending guys over, uh, especially... Like, like the merchant of Venice? Well, yeah. Yeah, the Venetians, they are in charge of a lot of the shipping. Sure. So merchants of Venice do have quite a say. Uh, the Genoese, uh, Genoa, they're famous bankers, so they start bankrolling this stuff. And they also, constantly Genoese crossbowmen show up all over the place. Crosswomen? Crossbowmen. Crossbowmen. Crossbows. They're apparently yeah. really good with them. They'd use like a big shield called a pavis or a pavis, and they'd hide behind it and they'd shoot. So you're like behind a moving wall of, of protection. And they'd mm. stand back and shoot stuff. Um, and they were also skilled with like fighting with a sword up close and personal. And so since they were funded by banks, they're typically well equipped, well trained, uh, and then they'd sell them as mercenaries, and that would help fund the banks even further, replenish their coffers, then you can have more stuff, shipping. Because at the time, banks aren't allowed to charge interest. Oh, okay. All of their wealth comes from investing, which maybe should be how banks Perhaps do stuff. Perhaps would be a good way for banks now, to run this. Because technically, interest is a sin by uh, Christian standards. Mm -hmm. It's called usury. Yeah. Borrowing money and then demanding more yeah. it when you get paid back. prey upon the poor. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Jews were treated very badly about this because Jews don't have a rule about usury. So And they couldn't own property, but they could have money. Mm -hmm. So they would loan stuff out. At interest, so it was it was not okay for Christians to give loans, but they could they could take a loan. Sure, they could get a loan. And so, could be mad at Jews forever. For and they could be mad at and they're like, "How dare you charge me interest? You knew what the deal was, man. I didn't force you. I can't legally. <laughs> this is so stupid." So fortunately, though, we don't talk about any uh, Jewish slaughters this week. Hey, None of that, that happens. was the promise. That was a promise. We get close um, though. So I'm just letting you know that that's like how the banking system. There's two banking systems. You yeah. can uh, get money at interest, or you uh, invest it, and then can eventually get it back, or possibly invest it with some return, mm. depending on which bank you go with, which family you're cool with. So all of this stuff is going on in France. Meanwhile, we're back in Brittany, which is a duchy of France, but it's also kind of English. Yeah. Brittany's a weird uh, little chunk of land that isn't fully French and it's not fully English. It's coastal. Um, both places have claim. Uh, but it's largely just given its independence. I'm Brittany, bitch. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah, that's, I'm that, that's, on, that's on their flag. That's on their flag. <laughs> uh, it's, it, that should have been uh, Jen's uh, motto, yeah. as we find out. <laughs> um, so... This becomes a great proxy war. So while Edward and Philippe are fighting in France, uh, the fighting never really goes to England, Fran which is funny because France sure is like, England is fine with. France has invaded mm -hmm. England a couple times, usually by invitation. Oh. <laughs> like John, the King John, Prince John from Robin Hood, actually invited the French to invade England once because hmm. he was struggling with the barons. Oh. It's like, will you help me out? The French are like, a chance to kill Englishmen? Okay, we are here. Come on by <laughs> for a, a fight. Yeah, and they, they would help the Scots when they were fighting. So, like, the French were like, oh, yeah. But now the English are like, shoes on the other foot, old boy. Ha -ha! Mm -hmm. We're invading we're you. We're coming over your place. Um, so, in Brittany, though, table. there's two really powerful houses running things. There's the House of Blois. B L O I S. That is a really hard one to pronounce. Blois. If it was Bois, not, so pro not a problem. Blois, not so problem. B L was Blois. It's because it's like pronounced B L W A H. Blois. So the house of Blois. 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 It's Blois. 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 I'm surprised I'm not just going and going. I was just doing a Jerry Lewis bit. I, I didn't know, mean to dive in. But then you said to Blave, and that's that's Billy Crystal, man. The Blave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so this is a new. This is, becomes a problem of the succession of who's going to rule when the Duke of Brittany dies. Yes. The House of Blois has a, a claim, and the House of Montfort has a claim. Um, not the same family as the De Montforts who fought. Uh, in England. There was Simon de Montfort that we talked about last week. Uh, I checked to make sure they're not the same. It might be a different line of the, the family tree, but not a direct descendant of okay. uh, Simone de Montfort. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it's basically like one camp is English, the Montforts, mm -hmm. and the other camp is French, the really hard to pronounce, Blois. Blah. Blah. Charles de Bois. I'm 
de Blois. I hate the, the L, just throws me. So Charles, Charles. Um, he is really close with Philippe. Really good friends. So Philippe backs him. Okay. And then Montfort is backed almost by default by England. Because Edward's like, ah, whoever the French like, I like the other guy. Okay. <laughs> don't care. I don't care. <laughs> now, because Olivier is a loyal uh, supporter of the French king, he joins the House of Blois. He's like, no, we, we got to help these guys. We're French. We speak French. I mean, we also speak a little English, but we speak French. Yeah. Uh, and that's my king, and I'm loyal to him, and I've campaigned with him, and he's my friend. So I'm going to be on his side. French is French. death. Here we go. All right. So in 1342, things really, like, come to a head. Wait, who said to the death? Just uh, now? Olivier. Who are you calling? Yeah. Olivier. He's like, and to the death. I will protect you to the death. So in 1341 is when the war starts, but in 1342... Mm -hmm. Pretty close to a certain date. That's what here. I'm saying. <laughs> Olivier <laughs> has this uh, is uh, sent to the city of Vannes, V-A-N-N-E-S, to protect it because he's he's shown that he's loyal. Now it's not the most critical stronghold, or he would they would have sent a much larger army, but it's important to hold all lands against the English, um, and the the House of Montfort and all of these others. So he's sent to be like the, to head the command. This is not in his land, but it's. He's important enough. He's a skilled enough fighter. He's been around for a while. He's he's 42 at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're 42 in a night, you, you've you been through some stuff. So they trust that he can handle it. Heck, if you're 42 and anywhere, <laughs> anywhere you've been through, you've some, been stuff. through some stuff. <laughs> it might not be the same life experience, but yeah, 42 in the Middle Ages. They're just like, wow, you're still around? you got to know some secrets, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but you were around and you've been in battles? Mm. Please. <laughs> Clearly, you know more than us. So he withstands four separate assaults or sieges from the English. It's not super clear if, if it was just like a, the English are camped here and they just attacked, and then they went back home, and then they attacked, and they went back home. Or, or if campaign. it was they had an invasion, it was completely dispersed, yeah, yeah. that kind of a thing. Okay. But he withstands four assaults by the English, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, he leads a very valiant rear guard as the city finally begins to collapse. Sends all the people into like the central citadel to protect them, and leads his very small remaining army to fight and let the civilians kind of retreat. Um, he's captured, not killed, but he's captured. As a nobleman at the time, it was usually considered if, uh, bad form to kill nobles. This changes during the Hundred Years' War pretty aggressively, uh, when English longbowmen just start murdering knights because they just don't feel like keeping prisoners. It's oh. too long. It's too difficult. Um, but this is a city siege, so it's usually a little different. Now we have a place to sit and put you afterwards. Oh. Uh, we have some supplies. It's That's not. Nice. It, we're not a mar an army on the march, so the rules are a little different. Uh, and because he fought bravely, they had respect for that. They're like, oh, wow, you stood back and fought us off. And, yeah, you killed some of our guys, but that was really brave of you. So we respect that. So we'll just take you prisoner and we'll ransom you. Ransom was totally accepted practice. It was considered uh, good form. It wasn't dishonorable to get ransomed. It wasn't uh, dishonorable to demand a ransom. It was like, no, this guy's valuable to you. Yeah. Uh, typically, you demand, I mean, it can be the equivalent of, like, a price gouging thing. Like, you really want your best night back? Oh, That's yeah. going to cost a lot. Or... Uh, this guy's a family member, costs more. This guy's lesser nobility, it's cheaper. This guy's just a Would you be soldier. offended if you, it was too low? I'd be offended. I think I would, too. Really? Just that much? Come that's on. it. That's all it costs? I mean, pay it, but also... I mean, yeah. <laughs> but that's... I think I'd be more offended if they were like, okay, so we got your best guy. How much do you think he's worth? No. Mm. 50 bucks? What? No, I you I, keep me here. <laughs> I'm worth more than 50 bucks. I, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I, can I join your army? <laughs> that's how little you think... <laughs> You're not a, like, yeah. I feel like, yeah. Be, envy. I would maybe be less offended if the guys were offering me back cheap. Mm -hmm. oh, I get to go home. I can pay that. Because it was usually the family that had to pay it. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, king, the, the king might pay some. Yeah. But it's not, I mean, it depends how close you are. Sure. But if you're a nobleman with lands, they're like, oh, dude, I have so much money. They will pay. That was usually what it came down to. It's like, I don't know. Okay, I'll give you a thousand bucks. Let me go. Let me just write a letter home. Let me have some peas porridge and bread while we wait. I'll be out of your hair. I'll be out of your hair. Yep. Might be back later. But if you capture me again, <laughs> another thousand bucks. See, it's not so bad. And that was how, like, poor soldiers paid for their war effort. Well, <laughs> you know, you capture a knight, you're like, 
Cha-ching. Yeah. Is this, how much are you worth? Look how nice his armor is. I, at the very least, I can take the armor and sell it. Is that but, why in some video games, when you punch a guy and you kill him, he just turns, turns into a bunch of coins? Turns into coins. It's, it cuts out the middleman of having to go get ransom. Yeah, okay. That's really what Mario's doing. Every time he drops out a Goomba, <laughs> yeah. he knocks him out, ransom him, get money. That's okay. what happens. I feel better so, about that. In this case, though, it is surprising that uh, there, during the negotiations, Olivier is offered back at a very low ransom. Hmm. The English apparently really respected him, and they're like, well, just let him go home. He's got a family. It's fine. Super cheap ransom. Let this one slide. Immediately, Charles, Charles de Blois, suspects treachery. That was too cheap. You lost, and you got ransom for cheap. You gave up the city. Oh... He assumes. Now, this guy valiantly defended the city against four assaults. Four times. And left a, a rear guard action to protect his people. And killed a bunch of English mm. and English allies. And yet... And then he's just like, nope, did not do enough. You are a backstabbing traitor bastard. Kill him. Well, oh, then kill him. <laughs> he gets us... He wants him dead. Yeah. He think Because if he's a traitor, the penalty's death. Yeah, yeah. So he assumes he's a traitor. Now, he acts cool about it. Don't worry, we're cool. <laughs> but Charles immediately suspects Olivier turned over the city on purpose. He gave away some kind of secret. It couldn't have been the fact that the English had overwhelming numbers, scaled the walls, and just started killing <laughs> his soldiers. And he was like, oh, crap. <laughs> he fought him four times, though. Yeah. Olivier. Well, maybe he should have fought him harder. I don't know. It was the fifth time the hard one. I note there. that Charles Dubois was not there fighting, so he doesn't know anybody. And bear in mind, at this time, nobody says anything bad about Olivier. Anyone who was there was like, no, he was he was heroic, he was valiant, he was brave, he protected us. Yeah. That's the that's the French side. And the English like, no, he was, yeah, the guy was like a lion. That was great. He was a great fighter. That was really impressive. We're lucky and to have got him. He's 42 years old. He's fighting like the 20 year olds and it's no big deal. Like, yeah, we're impressed. That's right. why we gave him back to you. <laughs> Just please don't put him in charge of another siege, because we'd like to take it in one assault instead of four. That was very costly. Sure, sure. <laughs> but for some reason, Charles, I don't know if it's personal enmity, if he's uh, just jealous of this guy, if he's jealous of his friendship with Philippe, if it's uh, a power move. This is a leading landowner in my duchy, and I can take him out, and then I can get his lands. Don't know what it is. Something. Something but rubbed him the wrong way. Olivier is freed. Goes home to a, a loving, grateful wife and his children who are growing. Some of them are, you know, like, uh, I think Jean is, he's, he's like an adult now. And he's helping mom. And, like, Jeanne, meanwhile, is like, she's like the queen of the area. Like, everybody, but, like, in a great way. Everybody seems to love Jeanne. Her husband's eldest son sees her as his mom. He's super protective of her. He's 100% loyal to her. Um, all of the, the local soldiers and all the local peasants like know her. So she's like riding around, talking to people, getting to know things, actually run, and she's running everything while her husband's gone. So he has... Who's this? This is Jen. Jen. So he has like, uh, Olivia has this huge trust in her that she can handle everything. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't have a steward. He has his, his wife does it. So she gains a reputation. Now she's at this time 42 as well. Okay. So she's not like this just young pup. Yeah. But she's very active. And she's running around doing all this stuff. He goes home. It's a lovely reunion. They're very happy to be together. He gets an invitation to go to a tournament to celebrate the truce of... Let me get the name right. Uh, Malestroit. Uh, M-A-L-E-S-T-R-O-I-T. And that was in uh, 19 January, 1343. So a little bit after the siege breaks, he goes home. And then he's invited to this tournament, along with some of the nobles that uh, were at the battle and helped him out. When they get to the tournament, they are immediately captured by the king <laughs> of France and Charles de Bois and thrown in prison. Oh, no. It is a cold, crappy prison. Not one of those nice it's prisons. not nice. He was treated better when he was ransomed by the English. Oh, boy. Um, Jen finds out about this, and she's pissed. Sure. We fought for you, both of you. We fought for Charles. We fought for Philippe. We we gave up uh, our time. We risked our lives. Like I, I was away from I my gave husband. Gave up my weekends. I, 
what do you want from us? What more do you need? You, you gave everything. And they're like, yeah. nope, he's a traitor. Look how easily he gave up Vance. And she's like, he mm. fought off the English four times. This guy's a hero. His, everybody who's there says he was a hero. And they're like, yep, don't trust it. On August 2nd, 1343, Olivier and the remaining nobles are let out, declared guilty, publicly executed by beheading. There is no trial. Wow. There is no discussion. There is no debate in front of a mob of people like common criminals. Then they are dismembered publicly and their parts are dispersed throughout the kingdom as traitors. Wow. This has almost never been done in the history of France. And, and we don't know why? No, nope. other than uh, they said it was treason. And they said, well, he admitted to it. But there's no record that he ever admitted to it. Jean Frossart, who is, at the time, uh, he's a contemporary, he's a great historian, he's one of our key sources for a lot of this information, condemned it as murder and heinous. He said, this is not okay. This is disgusting. This this guy was a hero who fought. Yeah. And all these other nobles. And first of all, they're nobles. You should not kill nobles like that. This seems like a, a big this is, step to not have a reason. This is awful. Why yeah. did you do this? Yeah. Immediately after that, Jeanne is brought up on charges because she allegedly tried to bribe a guard to free her husband. So she's actively trying to bust the dude out of jail. Sure. Um, it's... Cited under the Les Majesty laws, which is like, you're not supposed to do these things, this is what you're supposed to do, and you try to use your power and wealth to buy your husband's freedom, shame on you. Before they can arrest her, her eldest stepson fights off all the guards, along with like her elder children and some squires. They beat the crap out of the guys trying to arrest them. That's why you have a lot of kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is why you be nice to people, so they will they'll be sure. her back. And she runs back home, and she stews, and she thinks, and she gets mad. Oh, yeah. She takes her sons Olivier and Guillaume, who are two boys by Olivier, to Nance, where her husband's head is mounted above the wall, yeah. and she points to it. Yeah. And says, "Look." What France did to your father. And obviously these kids are like, Daddy! Yeah. How old are these kids? Uh, so let's see. Uh, I think Olivier is... Let's see. He was born in 1336, so he's seven. It's a learning <laughs> experience. And Guillaume is five. That's informative experience. <laughs> but yeah. she takes her kids cross country. Look what they did to your dad. That's what we're dealing with. She goes home, and rather than letting kids him, back in the car, back, she goes home. Now this is <laughs> worst, back in the day. worst vacation there, ever. Mom. This is back in the day when there are no cars. So this, I just imagine her sitting in the carriage, just stoically, like either just. I, I picture her more of a stoic. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a, I'd be a rage monster the whole time. Like wait till you get their kids. We're gonna see them. I wouldn't even bother doing this. But she Mama. very like it's recorded that she's like pretty grim about this. And she says, you need to see this because we're about to do something. All right. Ooh, what are they going to do? Because we're not done. Yeah. Because this isn't a story about Olivier. This is a story about Jen. Oh. Jen what? goes home. And rather than let her lands be confiscated, she sells them. To who? To her neighbors. Oh. Who hold them in trust. Oh, okay. She secures locations for her youngest children. Uh -huh. But she brings Olivier, Guillaume, and Jean with her. She gets an army of 400 men. She goes to the nearby castle of uh, Tofu. Which tofu? Looks like tofu. It looks like tofu, but with an extra U. Tofu. Where one of Charles, the Duke of Blois, or the Lord of Blois, one of his captains recognizes her, and he owns his castle. And hey. he says, hey, that's Jen. Hey, Jen. He doesn't obviously know exactly what's going on. He lets her hey, in. Hey, what's up, Jen? And she butchers every single person in the castle except one man. Hey. And sends him to Charles and says, this is not going to stop, and this is just the beginning. This is a random, she just randomly chose this neighbor? She just, she just picked, she picked a close one that was a stronghold of her enemy. Okay. And she kills every single person inside except one 
and sends him to the king or Charles, whoever is closer, and yep. says, you tell him what you saw here and say this is going to keep happening. Mm -hmm. Then she goes to another castle that used to be her husband's, and she besieges it and kills everybody inside except for one person. Is that a gangster? Yes. Then, rather than trying to fight a war like this, she sells off more lands and talks to King Edward III of England and says, you know how we fought? I'm on your side now. Oh. I need money. I have a plan. She buys three ships. She paints them black. She hangs them with red sails. She refers to this as the Black Fleet, and her flagship becomes My Revenge. And she begins to attack French shipping throughout the English Channel, and at 43 years old, becomes a pirate. She's a pirate? She leads charges and personally decapitates any nobles she finds on enemy ships and leaves a handful of survivors in every attack to go and tell the king of France that Jeanne de Clisson did this for revenge for what he did to her husband. Wow. At one point... Hell hath no fury. Hell hath no fury. It gets more intense. At one point, her flagship is sunk. Oh. She's there with her two eldest... Uh, with, with Olivia. Oh, she brought the kids she along? She brought the kids. <laughs> They're going to learn. Sure. This may not have been the best decision. Well. <laughs> because the ship sinks, and she basically clings to her children and to flotsam and jetsam for five days. Ooh. Guillaume dies oh, of man. exposure. Yeah. yeah. Thus proving that Leo could have gotten on the bed frame with Rose <laughs> in the door. Titanic. There's a door, a door, yeah. There's yeah. a door, a bed post, it's something... Yeah. He could have got on it because there's this woman with two kids floating on scraps. So, but the other kid died. But the so, kid died, yeah, so yeah. he got cold and wet. It, and this was five days. She just had to float for like an hour. So I don't have any sympathy. Okay. This is nonsense. All right. So well, we will end of my war. On, this is my war on James Cameron. The historical accuracy of the Titanic movie. You could have floated on that door or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so well, anyway. She saw a way out. Her... <laughs> When her son dies, and this seems to make her angrier. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, I mean, maybe don't bring your kid on piracy. a pirate yeah. <laughs> um, excursion. And then she gets brought back to Montfort lands. So the English supporters of the the, the whole Duke of Brittany thing. Yep. And she goes back on the ship. This time she leaves Guillaume or uh, Olivier Junior behind We're not for finished. a chunk of it. Yep. And for thirteen years. <laughs> wages a bloody campaign of piracy and murder across the channel as a basically an extension of King Edward. During his campaign in Cressy, which is a, a huge undertaking where Edward led an army overseas, she supplies his armies up and down the coast. Now, the timeline for this is kind of wonky um, because it said she became a pirate in 1540, or, uh, 1343, um, but that her kid died at the same time. I wonder if the kid didn't die first, hmm. and that's what drove her over the edge. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. that seems to fit. Because then she goes to England for a time, and then she's becoming a pirate. Yeah. So I feel like uh, some of the, the information might be out of, out of order right. in the sources that I found. Because um, it, it makes a much cleaner... Okay, she didn't become a pirate until something put her to sea. Maybe she was on a ship, and then they got attacked by the French uh, for what she did at the castles. Maybe she was traveling to England for whatever reason. They thought, English ship, kill everybody, sink the ship. Right. And then she says, because that, that seems to me like a good reason to become a pirate and have a ship called My Revenge. And then, then it's like, okay, you killed my husband, you killed my kid, you, you ruined my life, now it's on. As opposed to, well, I'm going to become a pirate, and then my kid's going to die because I, I was kind of an idiot mom bringing a five-year-old yeah. on a ship. I just don't see that necessarily as... Because she, she does so much to protect her children. Right. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me to that she would bring them yeah. pirating. Yeah. Cause this I is, also, I want to throw in, I do like the aesthetic of uh, painting the ship's black and getting red sails. Yeah. It's attention to detail. Exactly, right there. <laughs> exactly, right? Like It's these little things that you go... Because this is recorded... In French records, as yeah, yeah. this is the stuff that went on. Um, one of our sources is awesome. During a treaty between England and France, she's mentioned as, like, she has to stop doing what she's doing, or the treaty's no good. <laughs> so they have to rein her in. As she does more and more of this, she earns herself the title of the Lioness of Brittany. Mm. She is Brittany, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's, 
She is a savage. And she is not a sit in the castle and watch everything happen. It is noted that she's out there killing people. She's out there doing the stuff. And piracy at this time is horrifying. Because it's just a bunch of people with short weapons, because you don't want to get it tangled in the rigging, and grappling hooks. Pulling up alongside, maybe there's some arrow play, but you don't really want to use fire much because it doesn't really work well in the channel because yeah. everything's wet all the time. It's heavy oak, a lot of these things. Um, the ships are called cogs, which, I mean, they float about as well as a cog. Like, it's not, they're not great. They're kind of a big, like a, almost a U shape. Um, and if it's made for war, it has a forecastle and an aft castle. So like a raised platform with like, it, it looks like a little wooden castle. Hmm. It's got the little crenellations. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Little yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tetris pieces. And you stand up there and it's so you can shoot down at your enemy. Some of the more ridiculous ones had really high. That's not great for sailing. Right. Tip. The top of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she had these three ships and she just, they'd row up, they or not row up, but they'd sail up, maybe row a little bit. Get a little closer pile overboard and just brutally like this is hand to hand on a slippery deck in hazy awful weather because the English Channel is famous for just having rough gray seas it's just I don't think the English Channel's ever had a nice day <laughs> like entire invasions surely there was even in like the D-Day era they kept getting put off on invading in diesel engines and airplanes and ships because of weather. Yeah. And this woman's out there at 43 years old in the Middle Ages after having at least seven kids with an axe just laying out people. She's a tough old lady. She is. <laughs> During the 1350s, she is... Now, now, she started at 1343. Yeah. And then for 13 years was a pirate. So she was a pirate until she was 56 years old. Never too late to follow your dreams, kids. <laughs> During this time, she meets a fellow named uh, Walter Bentley, who's like uh, an English lieutenant. He's one of uh, Edward's top fighters. Um, and he's in charge of parts of the campaign. And I think that's how she met him, was probably like a joint effort. Hey, we're going to be doing this campaigning. Uh, I need supplies. Will you back me up? They fall in love. Uh -huh. So she's still, as a pirate, able to fall in love sure. again. Eventually, she uh, she hangs up the old uh, sailcloth, stops Whew. marauding and I murdering. Think I've proved my point. And she <laughs> starts picking a fight with England. Oh, <laughs> because yeah. Edward is a super backstabby, awful guy. Okay, um, takes after his father. He starts saying like Bentley's lands in Brittany don't count for him, and therefore uh, Jeanne has to uh, give up her lands, and because the king wants them. And it turns into a, he had all these allies in Brittany, and now he wants their land. Ah. And it becomes this whole thing. Eventually, he throws Walter in prison, and that makes Jen really angry. Jen knows how that ends up. <laughs> he gets released. They negotiate. In <laughs> lieu of them having lands in Brittany, he gives them lands in a different part of France that is actually apparently very nice. Um... I forget the exact name. It's like Heronford or something like that. It's, 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 and I looked it up. It's actually quite lovely. Okay, sure. Um, and they retire there. Uh, Walter dies of old age. Jeanne dies uh, not too long after him in 1359. Pirate, warrior, leader. Mother. Mother. Lioness. It's amazing. Like, this is one of the toughest, yeah. baddest women in history. And at the same time, there's another Jeanne named Jeanne Le Flemme, who is the flame. And she's a duchess who wore plate armor and fought on the walls of her castle to protect it. <laughs> They're contemporaries. They knew each other. Oh. They knew each other in passing. Women getting things done. And it's all the Jeannes. And then not too long later, we have Jeanne d'Arc, Joan of Arc. Yeah, I've heard of her. The French have... She had you, a different problem with fire. She had a... <laughs> Oh my god! And she—it was a—it was an Edward who killed her too. Oh. <laughs> I think it was Edward the Third's like grandson. I think it was the fifth. The Edwards all suck. Look up more names. Uh, <laughs> come up with better come names, with it, yeah. England. There's a ton of them. So that is the death of Olivia de Clisson. But more importantly, that's the story of Jen de Clisson, the lioness of Brittany. The birth. The birth of the lioness. The of birth Brittany. of the lion of Brittany. Oh, she is. Yeah, yeah. That was. At 42, she just, just crossed the line and made her mad. I am. It's, I just like to think of it. I have a particular set of skills. 
skills that have made me a good mother over the years and an unholy terror for you. I will find, find you, I will hunt you down, and I will kill you. I'm surprised I've not heard of this story at all I know, before. it blows my mind. Or I'm actually that I've not seen a... I'm a, actually working uh, on a book. A fictionalized version of Zuri. I'm working and, on a book. Yeah? Because this is my girlfriend's like favorite. She's her favorite pirate, but honestly, she, her life is just fascinating because yep. there's this deep romance where she adored Olivier. Like, they met at some point while they were both married to other people, and this is like a love thing. And in, this is a time where that's not a possible, really, for a lot of families. No time for I love. Mean, and yeah, it sucks. Like, we're they, busy they, dying they, of the they plague. Obviously, <laughs> they cheated on their spouses, and that's, sure. that's not okay. I also don't know if their spouses cheated on them. Mm. I don't think um, Olivier's did. She got sick, so I think I think that was the thing is she was sick and he was sad, and then he met Jen, mm. and then they had a fling. But we'll then that out five the, years uh, later, the treatment. Yeah, exactly. I'm yep, skipping it over. They just lo- stare longingly at each other at a banquet. Mm. They'll do the thing where they're like walking, and there's like a pillar that cuts between them. You know, oh. it's just this longing and distance. <laughs> but no, I, I just think it's beautiful that they find love after all this hardship. This is a guy who sees her. With all of her her children, her 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 background, um, and he just loves her, and then she takes him with his previous life and his children and loves them, and they become this big family where everybody's equal, and they create some amazing heirs. Like there's the butcher, but then there's uh, John, who's the eldest son, and he becomes like a noble in his own right. He lives a long, healthy life, and they make they make so they they could have been like. They were a power couple. Yeah. And then she was so devastated by his betrayal and his murder, by his supposed friend, by his king, uh, by her duke, by all these people that were supposed to have their back, and they just murdered him, and there's no there's no historical reason for it. There's no logical reason for it. There's there's only a potential of an emotional land grab kind of a reason where they just murdered this really good man horribly. Yeah. In publicly, and then spread his bits around like he was, you know, William Wallace, the traitor who led a rebellion. Like he didn't do anything bad. Well, he sure paid for it, though. He, he paid. You know, no good deed goes unpunished. Sometimes they, you know, murder you in public. And, no, I mean, oh Charles, yeah. Uh, yeah. The it. thing I think that's that stinks for her is she never got her hands on uh, De Blois. <sighs> she never did. She wanted to. Uh, Philippe died before her, so she never got him, but she outlived the king that betrayed her. Okay, well. But she never got <laughs> uh, De Blois, and I think that really sucked for her. So at some point, though, she had to say, all right, I've had enough revenge. Yeah. yeah I've been Which, enough of the that's high That's a seas. crazy story, too. Like, I don't, Maybe her son came and was like, Mom. <laughs> Can we go home? You gotta stop. <laughs> Can we stop Can we, sailing in the seas? I'd like to stop with the murder, but... You know, whether it was she found love again with uh, Walter sure. Bentley or, or whatever it was. That's all I was looking for on the... <laughs> yeah, she's just like, I think she, like, the fire kind of went out. She's like, okay, I've done enough damage. Yeah. You no. know, I, maybe it was a heart-to-heart with her kids. Like, You mom, can only do revenge for so long. Yeah, mom, you're you're 50 now. Yeah. You can take a break. <laughs> I got, and, then, and then Olivier, clearly, he had it from there on because... Although it is interesting that he became a constable of France. So he, yeah. I think because of the fallout between her and the King of England... And, like, the way he kind of did her family dirty, I think that made him go, all right, so you can't be trusted either. Now it's a new king. Philippe's we dead. Don't trust any kings. De Blois is dead. All right, I'll, 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 I'll preserve, and he preserved the family. And he had a ton of kids, and his heirs go on and on and on. I think the House of Clisson is still a thing. So that's Olivier and Jeanne de Clisson the lioness of Brittany Jeanne de Clisson absolutely one of my most favorite one of the coolest characters in history much less one of the coolest women in history and it was just because she did all the things it's amazing well excellent well done Will thank Thank you thank you I found it very informative Uh, that was uh, the death of Olivier de Clisson yep Uh, and uh, next week we'll be discussing the battle of I think it's Graveline Graveline Gravelines Uh, it looks like Gravelines Um, it's in Holland Okay. Or Flanders, I think. Um, uh, 1588 in Holland. Yep. Don't know anything about that. We'll find out. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe and comment if you have any comments or any yeah, corrections. Yeah, totally. Ask us questions. Tell us stuff we didn't know. Tell your friends about it. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Will. Oh, thanks, Mike, for having me. This was great. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.